Hello everyone and welcome to Cricketing with Delanda. It's me again, Delanda, and thank you so much for joining me today. In today's tutorial, I have three goals for you. One, I'm gonna show you how to find the name of a font. And I know that you have been in a, in a situation where you've seen a font on someone's shirt or in someone's project and you wanted to know what font is that? I'm gonna help you do that. That's one goal. Our second goal is to show you why choosing the right font matters. And then the third and last goal is I'm gonna share with you 12 of the fonts that I love that are free from defont.com. Now, when I say free, some of them are free for personal use only. And then some of them are actually 100% free. They don't require you to purchase them from the author of the font. Now, each of these authors will accept donations. However, the fonts that I'm gonna show you that are 100% free don't require a donation. So at the end of this video, if you find this tutorial helpful, please consider liking the video, subscribing to my channel, and turning on the bell for notifications because I do upload new content every single week. Before we get into the video, I wanna show you three shirts that I own personally. One I'm wearing already. This one just says, I love my husband. You can see the font clearly on this shirt. You could be 10 feet away from me and still you can read what this shirt says. It just says, I love my husband. And so when you're thinking about fonts to put on a shirt or a message that you want to put on a shirt, you're going to be looking for fonts that are big and bold and that send a clear message. You don't want someone to have to come up close to you to have to read what your shirt says. Okay, so it's important when you're looking at different fonts, and I'm gonna show you several that I really do like, um, some script fonts and some that are not script, um, that will help you when you're designing you know, your own shirt. This is another shirt that has a lot of fonts on it. My husband purchased this shirt for me, I wanna say about four years ago, and I want you to notice that it has a lot of different fonts on it, okay? so. The main message of this shirt is that I'm a spoiled wife. And so if you look at this shirt closely, you can see that that's the biggest message on this shirt. It says, yes, I'm a spoiled wife, but not yours. I am the property of a freaking awesome husband. So this, the, whoever made this shirt, they also want you to know that my husband is what? Awesome. Um, it says he was <laughs> born in April. He's a bit crazy, and I'm reading this backwards, so it's, it's kind of weird for me, but it says he's a bit crazy and scares me sometimes. It says, don't flirt with me. If you can read this shirt, you are already too close. Yes, he bought me this shirt. Okay, so this shirt sends a message. So from far away, you can see that it says, I'm a spoiled wife, but you have to get closer to read the bottom message of this shirt. And what does it say at the bottom? If you're reading this, you're already what? Too close. Okay, so this is a perfect example of a shirt that has different fonts and it still sends a clear message. This is another shirt that I own. This one just says Houston Strong. Now this, you know, it's, it's a Houston Rockets shirt. You can read it from far away. It sends a clear message that this shirt is, you know, we're, I'm representing the Houston Rockets. Uh, the Houston, you know, Houston is in the state of Texas. Okay, so it sends a message also. So whenever you're choosing a font, think about what is the message you're sending and do you want, you know, remember that you want someone to be able to read your shirt or whatever you're putting your font on, you want someone to be able to read it from far away. Now I'm gonna show you one more thing that has a font on it. This is just a mug that I made with infusible ink and it just says coffee, craft, repeat. You can see that from far away. You don't have to come up and say, what does that mug say? Well, I can't see it, I can't see it. So, you know, when you're making something it has words on it, any words, it, it could just be the word love you know, you want to send a clear message without someone having to say, well, can I hold it so I can look at it? That That's not necessary, okay? So without further ado, let's get to our first goal, which is for me to help you find the word, the font. So if you look at, you're looking at a font, you, let's say you're looking on Etsy and there's a font there and you're wondering what font is that? I'm gonna show you two ways to find the name of that font. Okay, and then we'll move into our second goal. And once again, if you feel that we've accomplished the three goals that I've established, at the end of this video, you're gonna do three things. You're gonna like the video, you're gonna to subscribe to my channel, and you're gonna turn on the bell for notifications because I do upload new content 
every single week. So without further ado, let's get started. For our first goal, we're going to, I'm gonna show you how to find what font it is that you're looking for. The website that we're gonna use for this is one that is called What fontis.com. I've already typed it here in my search bar and it, it, it sounds just like it is written. What font is .com. Now, one thing you'll notice, and I just want to give you a, you know, I want to forewarn you, there are a lot of ads that are going to pop up while I'm using this website because I'm not logged in and I'm not signed up. I don't have an, an account on this page. Um, and so because I don't have any account with what font is .com, there will be a lot of ads and that's how they pay for basically they pay for this website. And I'm just going to use it that way because I don't plan on having an account and I don't plan on logging in or signing up or any of that. I just want to show you how to use this website. OK, so the first thing we're going to do is we are going to go to. So we have the website pulled up. We're going to go to defont.com. OK, so I'm going to go to defont.com and I'm going to look at one of uh, one of the fonts that I really like. One of my favorite fonts is one that is called Joseph Sophia. So I'm going to type it right here in the search bar. Joseph Sophia. OK, and it comes up. And when I look at it, I love this font. This is considered as a script font. I can tell that it's free for personal use. I can download it. Um, I can donate to the author. OK, um, when what I need to do in order to see if what font is will recognize this font is I have to take a picture of it. And in order for me to take a picture of it, I'm going to use an app that is called a snipping tool. Now, the snipping tool, I'm pretty sure that it is it is standard on most Windows computers. So it's, it's not it doesn't cost any money. So I want to click on that, the snipping tool, and I'm just going to highlight over the font. And what it's going to do is it's going to actually take a picture of it. I'm going to save this. I'm going to click save. So what I did is I clicked these three dots and then I click save. And I'm just going to save this on my desktop as I'm going to just change, call it Sophia. Okay. I'm going to click save. All right. I'm going to minimize this and I'm going to go back to what font is. Now, the first thing it's asking me to do on what font is, is asking me to upload a picture of the font that I found. So I'm going to click right here and I'm going to navigate back to my desktop to the one that's called Sophia. That's what I called it, Sophia. OK, now that I have it, it's, it's coming up. Now, it's going to tell me to crop the text. It says, please highlight or draw a new crop box to select only the part of the image with the font you want to identify. So I'm only going to look for um, I'm going to look for the word Sophia. OK, I'm just going to move. I just move my box over to the word Sophia. I'm going to close this right here because this is actually an ad and I'm going to click next step. OK, when I do that now, I can click this auto adjust, but it also tells me if the letters are too close to each other, then use the mouse to draw lines to separate them. Now, I know these letters are close together because this is a script font and these letters are actually attached to one another. And I'm going to close this ad right here and I'm going to use my mouse to just draw lines. I'm going to just draw a red line between each of these letters to uh, to detach them. OK, and I'm going to do this um, one more time. So just to make sure you understand this process and then I'm going to click next step. OK, so now it says input only one letter from above. If the letter is split in more images, drag each image over another to combine them into a single character so i can see the s is by itself the o is alone the the p the h the i but this heart goes on top of that i so i'm going to just drag it over and then the a came up to its own separate box so i'm going to go into these boxes and type just what i see s o p h i a 
And then I have the option to only display free fonts or I can just leave that unchecked. Now, remember, I already know the name of this font. I'm using this tool to see if it can identify the name of this font. So I'm not going to click this. I'm just going to click next step and see what happens. Okay. And look, it says there's Joseph Sophia regular. And here it is. It found that font for me. Now I can see that they found one that actually costs money. Um, if I want to use it as a commercial license and remember that's true because this is a free font for personal use only. If you're going to be using this font to make sales, then you would need to purchase this font from the author. Okay. So now if I look at my filter right here, I have the option to look at the commercial use uses of the font free personal Google fonts or all. I just have mine selected on all. Okay. Let me see what happens if I click on free personal and see if anything comes up. So it'll give me other fonts that look like that, that are free for personal use. And then I can make a decision if I want to use one of these instead of the one that I already know and love. Okay. So now we've gone through this process one time. Let's go through this process again by using a font that we find from Etsy. Because a lot of times we shop, we look on Etsy and we wanna see what there is to offer. So I'm gonna just go to the Etsy website, etsy.com. And I'm going to type in, um, I'm gonna type in water bottles. Okay. And okay, so I'm gonna look, let's see, I want to look at, Mm. Ooh, I like that one. That one says Madison, like my baby girl. Okay, look, look at this one that says Melanie. I like that. And I want to know what font is that, that this person is using? Oh, but I like these two. This one says Finley. This one says, but I'm, I'm going to go with, I think I'm going to go with this one that says Melanie. I'm going to go back to my snipping tool. I'm going to click new. And I'm going to make a box around that word, that name, Melanie. Now, I know that I cannot put my font in vertically like this. So I'm going to go ahead and save this. Okay. And I'm going to save this as Melanie as a PNG file. And it's saved on my desktop. And then I'm going to go back and I'm going to open this file. Now, remember, it's on my desktop and the name of it was Melanie. Okay, it's right here. I'm going to right click on this and then I am going to rotate this to the right. Okay, because it needs to be vertical in order for me to, um, it needs to be horizontal in order for me to use it in whatfontis.com. So now I'm going to go back to what font is and I'm going to go to, uh, let's see, previous step. Because now I need to go back and I need to upload the image. Okay, this is an ad. I'm going to close this. Okay, so I'm going to go and click here and I'm going to navigate to Melanie, click open. Okay, and there is the, the name Melanie. I'm going to click next step. And then it says we recommend you choosing this one, but you can choose this one. I'm going to use the one they recommend. Okay, and then let's see what it says. Input only one letter. So now I need to connect this M, you know, because that's one letter let's see i need to connect all of the m okay there's the e there's the a the l the a i need to connect this in okay this this dot let me click right here this dot goes over this i okay this one is ruler ruler word okay so I'm having to like make it all fit. Let's see. Let me move that. Let's see. Okay, so I'm gonna just type in the letters that I see. M, E, L, A, N. Uh, let me move this I up here. And type the I. Okay, and let's see what they give me. If they are able to find a font that looks like 
Ooh. Okay. So I have some options right here. This one is pretty. The, this, it looks like this font right here. Almost. The E is a little bit different, but the A is connected just like this A is connected. So I really like that. So, you know, I can look at these and I can decide if any of these are close to what I'm looking for. It kind of looks like this one, Yacht Ligatures. It kind of looks like that, but this E is more mm, classic, I would say. So I can kind of just look through these and see, you know, if any of these are close to what I'm looking for. And if I find something I like, but I'm just not sure, I can narrow my search to look for free personal fonts that will be close to this or similar to this. I'm going to close this. Okay. So I'm looking at these and I really don't see any that I really, that I really like or that are, you know, close enough for me. I kind of like this one, Bodonis Bulimi. I know I didn't say that right. I'm pretty sure I didn't. But if I was just looking for a font that would get me close to that one, this one is pretty close also because I like that A. But that's the process. OK, so I hope this helps. And, um, you know, you can always, you know, rewind the video. You can always slow the video down. I have a whole full uh, YouTube short on how to slow the video down so you can see this process again. But I will do this one more time from defont.com just to give you um, another chance to see this because I definitely want you to understand this process because I see it all the time. People um, are looking at, you know, different projects and they're wondering, you know, what font is that? And it's always hard to find out what font it is. Okay, so let's look at it one more time from defont.com. This time, instead of looking at Joseph Sophia, let's look at a font that is called um, Subscriber. That is another one of my favorite fonts. I really, really like this font. Okay, so I've I've found the font. I am going to go to my snipping tool. I'm gonna click new. I'm going to highlight over the font. I am going to save it. Okay, just save it as you know, subscriber. Save. Okay, and then I'm gonna go back to what font is. I'm going to click out of this ad. I'm gonna upload that image. Okay, and it was called subscriber. Okay, and I am going to go to next step and let's see what they suggest. All right, um, because they these letters are not touching, I'm gonna to leave it just like this. I might just do like an auto adjust and then close this ad click next step and see if they can find it. Okay. So now because these letters are in all caps, when I type mine in, I'm going to type mine in all caps. Also I'm gonna turn on caps lock. I'm going to type S U B S C R I B E. Okay. Do you know? Okay. Thank you for telling me that. Let's see if it's still let me type. Okay. And then I'm going to click next steps and see if it'll find it. Okay. So now my search is on all. And so far they haven't found it. Melanie action. Okay. It doesn't look like they are going to find it as, um, that font. So let me change my search to look for free personal and see if they are able to find it. Okay. This one says white elephant. It doesn't look like they found subscriber. Um, Hastings bold. Go cloud. Mabella, Big Dog, Bodrum, Knowledge, Wolfgang, The Imperial, Yummy Mummy. They found some nice ones though. So even if I didn't see any that I liked or the exact one, I might decide to use one of these other ones, Baby Girly. Oh, I like that so much, Baby Girly. That is so cute. But it doesn't look like they were able to find that exact one that is called subscriber. I guess they didn't take a hint from the name subscriber. <laughs>
It doesn't look like they um, were able to find it at what font is, but now hopefully you understand this process and you're able to find something that is close to what you are looking for. Okay. So I've shown you two ways. And so hopefully you will agree that we have accomplished our first goal. Now we will move to the second goal, which is looking at why choosing the right font matters. Okay, so now I am in Microsoft Word and our second goal is to look at why choosing the right font matters. So let's just say I typed out this sentence, I will always love you. You know, in general terms, if someone sent you that message, it would make you feel good. It would be a positive message. It would feel, you know, it would feel awesome. You might feel butterflies. You might feel happy. You might feel, you know, you just might have a joyous feeling in your heart if someone sent this message and it just says, I will always love you. Well, because font matters and this is just a regular plain, let's see what font this is. This is Calibri body. Okay. Let's look at this in a different font, right? So there's this font called Marcha that I downloaded from defont.com. If you receive this message, once again, I will always love you. And it would look like this. You would think, oh my goodness, whoever sent this to me, they must really love me because look at all those curls or swirls in that font. This would give you a good feeling. But let's look at that exact same sentence in a different font. There's a font that is called fiendish now leave me a comment below and let me know what this font makes you feel if someone sent you a message and it was in this font would you feel love would you feel happy like what feeling would you get what feeling does this font evoke for you okay so this is one example of why choosing the right font matters okay so you definitely want to be careful about choosing a font it, you want your font to match your message okay so let me show you another example well just one more example so here's a word called truck fist right and so if we look at this word in the font scriptina let's look okay we see truck fest but let me make it a little bit bigger see why we have to be careful about that and then let's look at the same exact word in this font called freebooter. It doesn't really look like <laughs> it doesn't really look like truck fest, right? So we have to be very, very careful about how we use fonts, the fonts that we choose, the message that we're sending. OK, so it's definitely important to choose the right font. So hopefully you feel like we've accomplished our second goal, which was to be careful about choosing the right font, because I will always love you written this way is definitely not the same as I will always love you written in this way. I am back in Microsoft Word and I just created this document that just has 12 of my favorite fonts that are found on defont.com and I kind of just categorize them some of the bold fonts that I like some of the script fonts that I like and two of the I would just say other that fall in the other category so the first font these first four fonts right here are bold font. So this one is literally called the bold font. I like it because it's bold. It's easily readable. It's sans serif. So sans means it doesn't have any of the little, you know, glyphs or anything that are attached to it. And I'm going to show you exa an example of what each of these fonts look like. Um, the purpose for this font would be, you know, to use on t-shirts, wood projects. It's unisex, so it's not like specifically for women or specifically for men. Um, anybody could use this font and, you know, make a nice project. This one is 100% free, so that means you could use it commercially, you know, if you were going to be selling um, an image on a t-shirt. Another one that I like is one called Kenyan Coffee. I like it because it's easily readable. It's also sans serif. You can also use it on t-shirts and smaller projects. It's not as big and bold as the bold font. It's also 100% free. 
Another font that I like is one called Sublima. It's bold. It has two different options in this font. It's bold and light. It's multi-use, um, also 100% free. And the last of the bold fonts that I, you know, just want to condense this, but you'll have to find fonts that you like for yourself, is one that's called Made Tommy. I use this one quite often when I'm making, you know, bigger images, especially if I'm making something for my husband, uh, because I don't like to put any of the glyphs or anything on shirts that I'm making for him. This one is also bold. It's easily readable. It's, it also has a softer option. Um, you can use it on t-shirts, multi-use projects. It's also unisex. This one is not 100% free. It's only free for personal use. All right. Then some of the script fonts that I like, all of these pretty much serve the same purpose. Four of them are free for personal use. And then the two at the bottom are 100% free. The four at the top, Chocolate, Joseph Sophia, Hello Honey, and Candle Mustard. All of these are very, very fancy in my opinion. And they have a lot of glyphs that are offered when you get into the character map. Um, but these are all calligraphy and script fonts. Master of Break and Louisa are very pretty also. But, and you know, the best thing about these is that they are 100% free. So if you want to put these on, you know, a t-shirt or anything like that, you know, I would definitely be careful about putting these on a t-shirt because you want your image to be read from far away. I would definitely say, you know, use these for smaller projects. Maybe if you're doing something for a, a bridal party or something fancy, maybe wedding invitations or something like that. These would be perfect for something like that. And then the two at the bottom, um, Genkeist. I've used Genkeist several times um, on my Black History shirt. I use that font and I've used it on just shirts for myself personally. It's very fancy. I would consider it as like old school. Use it on t-shirts, multi-use. This one is also only free for personal use, but you could definitely download, um, donate to the author. And then the last one is called Subscriber. It is bold, it is script, it is uppercase, it's multi-use, and it is 100% free. The second page of this document is just an example of what all of these fonts look like. So in case you were wondering, like, what do, what do they look like and how can I use them? This is what they all look like. All right. So hopefully we've accomplished our third goal, which was for me to share 12 of my favorite fonts with you and how I use them or how you could use them and what they look like. All right. And I want to give you one additional bonus. I want to show you how to um, filter your search when you're looking on defont.com. I am back on the defont.com website and I want to show you how to filter your search when you are looking at different fonts. So let's just say I was in the, you know, at the menu and I was looking at all of these different categories. Let's just say I go to the old school category and I want to look at, let's say I want to type my name and I want to see my name in all of the old school categories, but I'm going to look at right here where it says more options. I want to filter my search to look for 100% free fonts. Okay. I don't want to find the ones that, you know, are requiring me to donate to the author. Um, I want to donate to the author if I want to. Okay. So if I want to filter my search just to look for fonts that are 100% free, I can click submit. And then I can look in the old school category at fonts that are 100% free and I can see, you know, which ones you know, I like, or which ones like really speak to me, which ones that, you know, I really want to download. Okay. So I just wanted to give you that extra bonus tip and I hope you found this helpful. You know, hopefully you feel like we accomplished the three goals that we had established at the beginning of the video. If you did, if you feel like we accomplished those three goals, please consider liking this video, subscribing to my channel and turning on the bell for notifications because I do upload new content every single week. Thank you so much for joining me today and thanks for watching. Bye.